Thanks for tuning in and welcome back to the shop. This is our 2013 Mitsubishi Fuso FG that we're building into an overland camper. According to the thermometer over there, it's starting to get a little cold in my shop. And that means I'm running out of window to use the glue to put the last couple of panels in the back of the habitat box. The one thing that I want to get done before I glue those panels in though, is have the power inlet and outlets installed on the front. So that's what we're going to do today. You may recall in a previous video that I installed a NOCO 15 amp inlet on the front of the flat deck to hook up to the NOCO Genius charger that I used to keep the truck's batteries on float charge. I could have gone with the same inlet this time, but I wanted to see what else is out there on Amazon. So I've got a couple of options. I've ordered both an inlet and an outlet because, well, let's save that for a little bit later. Here's option number one. Is this an inlet or an outlet? This is an outlet, I think, yes. So we'll be having a single 15 amp outlet installed on the front that'll be powered from inside the truck, which means this is a 15 amp inlet. I could have stuck with the NOCO. The only reason I didn't is the 15 amp NOCO inlet has a pre-existing wire on it with a, with a an outlet on the inside. And that's great if you're doing just a single circuit, but this will eventually power anything inside the truck. So it's very similar to the NOCO, but it does not come pre-wired. And that allows me, now I could have just cut the cord off, but that allows me to wire this to an electrical distribution panel on the inside. The other thing with going with this one is the NOCO cord actually comes out on an angle on the bottom. And I'll show you that on the front of the truck but this one is dead straight. So the thickness of the wall in the camper box is 38 mil or an inch and a half. And that with a cord coming out partway down would have ended up coming out inside the wall and I would have had to make a strange kind of hole on the inside. So I saw this one, it's basically the same concept. It's a 15 amp inlet, it comes with a nice cover, allows me to run my own cord at whatever length I want to the panel, you just have a simple hookup on the back. So I thought, a little bit more versatile. Let's try it out. I apologize for the poor lighting up here, but let's take a quick look up at the front. So this is the NOCO 15 amp inlet. My power cord is coming in here, just a regular 15 amp cord. So that plugs in here. And this inlet comes through the front of the flat deck. And as you can see on the back side here, the cord comes out on a bit of an angle downward. That goes to the regular cord end into which the NOCO Genius charger comes up here and plugs in. As I said, that's great for a single circuit because all I need on the truck is that NOCO charger to float these batteries when the truck is not in use. The idea of what I'm installing on the camper box is almost the same. In the same area where I have the truck plugged in, I'll have an inlet that I can plug the camper box in. Right beside that, I'll have an outlet. And that's going to allow me to plug the main power into the camper box and then plug the camper box outlet into the truck inlet. Now that may seem a little strange, but what it does is it allows me to plug in the camper box completely separately from the truck if they're not in the same place. For example, I may have the camper box sitting outside and the truck inside. I can plug them in separately, but when they are together, I only need one cord to power both of them. Another advantage of setting it up like this is once the truck is complete, I will have an inverter in the electrical system. And that means I can power that exterior outlet with 120 volts when we're off grid. While I don't have plans to run any specific 120 volt loads off the outside of the truck, it is nice to have the ability if I ever need to plug in 120 volt water or fuel transfer pump, or even if I just need some lighting farther away from the truck, I can just plug in an extension cord and have that power available. Now, couldn't I just run all of those types of loads off of the batteries? Yes, I could. But typically when you're running DC power over a long distance, you get a voltage drop unless you're using very large cables. So if I want to run a water pump 50 feet away from the truck, it's much more straightforward to just run an extension cord and power it with AC. Last thing before we get going, if you're doing electrical installs, please make sure you understand what you're doing. Electricity can kill, electricity can cause fires. So if you don't know what you're doing, get someone else to do it for you. 
When you're selecting components, make sure they've got ratings. UL, CSA, or whatever country you live in will have a safety standard that these type of components have to meet. It's not worth saving a couple of dollars for something that's going to melt and catch fire. For the location on the front of the truck, I've simply put some tape on the camper box and I've gone about six inches, I think it's six and a half, in from where the inside of the wall will be, which is about eight inches uh, from the outside wall. And that puts me in line with the inlet for the truck. And then I will move six inches in from there to have the outlet that will either feed my exterior devices or plug back into the truck for the float charger. If you want a simple way of locating this and seeing what it's going to look like, take your gasket out of your inlet or outlet and just place it where you want to drill it and that kind of shows you how much space you'll have around it. Nice simple way without making any kind of templates or cardboard cutouts. It's already on there, just peel it off and use it. On the inside I've come in six and a half inches to the first hole plus six for the second and I've come up three inches from the floor to the center and that should give me plenty of room on the outside. I'm going to be using a inch and three quarters hole saw going very slowly so I don't chip the gel coat on the outside. Now ideally I would have liked to have drilled from the inside and the outside but because the camper is already on the truck I don't actually have room for my drill in there. That's why you plan ahead. Whew. Nothing like drilling holes through a perfectly good wall. If you're wondering what this Lynx truck is that keeps running across the screen, it's just me letting you know that I've put a link in the video description to the product that I'm talking about. If you're looking for more information or you want to purchase this product, go into the video description underneath the video, click on more, more will show up and you may need to click more again, and there you will find the link to the product that I'm talking about. Well, don't ask me why I didn't think of this before, but uh, if you tilt the cab, there's lots of room to get at the front of the box. So I have tilted the cab up and that's going to allow me to get these lined up, mark and drill the mounting holes and then I can install them. I did have to open up the hole for the inlet. Uh, the inch and seven eighths wasn't quite big enough for this threaded portion here. Not quite sure why there's a threaded portion. It didn't come with a nut but either way. Uh, open it up just a little bit there. Uh, this one was fine. It fits in. I'm going to have to pre-wire these before I put them in uh, and because of that I'll only be doing a dry fit for now because the wiring that I'm hooking up right now is kind of a temporary wiring until I have my electrical panel. That'll do for now. As I mentioned this is just a temporary hookup so this is to get us through the build out of the interior of the truck. Once I get to doing the electrical system, I'll rewire this with the proper heavy gauge wire going to an electrical breaker panel or something that's gonna give me overcurrent protection on the inside of the truck. Right now, this is just a fancy extension cord end. What I am doing is I have sort of some off cut cord ends. Uh, I have an extension cord that I'm gonna sacrifice and I'm gonna use this to provide a cord end on the inside and then provide the feed back to this. And then my cord end that I think I cut off of a light will be used with another cord end as a mini extension cord to go back to the truck. One thing I've noticed with the 15 amp outlet is it appears that the slots where you tighten the screws are actually open through to the outside. And that's fine if you have the, the weather cap in place because that'll seal it up. But just, just a thought to keep in mind if you're planning on keeping something plugged into an outlet like this, um, this specific one may not be the best to leave plugged in all the time. Um, again, with the cap in place, it looks like it seals the water out. So I'm going to get to hooking up some cord ends and then we'll screw these in from the outside. Just doing a dry fit for now, no sealant because it's temporary. Let's see how that looks.
Once again, I've tossed the hardware that comes with these parts and replaced them with stainless steel. And with that, the outside is done. For now, the inside is dead simple. You plug the inlet into the outlet and we're good to go. I do have a couple more outlets available on here now that I can use to power stuff on the inside, like our lights, which means I can get rid of the cord that runs through the back wall. On the outside, all I have left to do is plug in my mini extension cord and that will get the truck plugged into the camper box, allowing me to feed everything with one cord. I hope you enjoyed that video. Hope it helped someone. If it did, give us a like, share it around. Don't forget to throw a comment down below, hit subscribe and come back next time. Thanks for watching and we'll see you then.